more on the Knicks, we go out to our progressive guest line right now, and we bring on CP the Franchise, the host of Knicks Fan TV, the most popular Knicks channel on YouTube. And CP is kind enough with his time this morning to talk all things Knicks and NBA. CP, thanks for coming back on, my man. How are you? Jake, good morning. Uh, couldn't be better, man. Fourth seed in the East. It's been an incredible season for these Knicks, so I'm happy to be on and talk playoff basketball. I, I really didn't imagine that this would come so soon after a disastrous 2019-2020 uh, uh, season, but nevertheless, we're here. It is so surreal, and you just heard Tom Thibodeau there in the cup we just played saying you can't just be satisfied with making the playoffs. That's how he's coaching the guys, but I think every Knicks yeah. fan... I mean, we are beyond satisfied with what's happened this year. For me, CP, it's just house money from this point on, right? Totally house money, Jake. I mean, this is a team that won 21 games last year. They've doubled that now, 41 wins in a 72-game season, Jake. It, it's incredible. You stack that on top of the fact that they are built not just to win, you know, a couple of uh, games in, in this first round here, but they're built for the future with draft capital, salary cap flexibility. So from top to bottom, this organization has done a good job composing this roster. They brought in quality vets that can help them win with Derek Rose and, and Taj Gibson. You have Julius Randle having an outstanding year. R.J. Barrett having an, an outstanding second year. A coach of the year candidate in Tibbs. You have a rookie of the year candidate in, in Quickly. So th this has been a, uh, an outstanding season by this organization, top to bottom. CP, if Tom Thibodeau does not win the NBA's coach of the year, do you believe that Knicks fans will riot across the country? I, I think so, man. This is you know, it, it, it's incredible because, as I, as I said in the last interview, you know, Tibbs came in with a reputation of running guys into the ground, quote unquote. He was voted in the athletic as the coach that players would least want to play for, and he's turned it around. And as I said, when your top guy in Julius Randle has bought in, has said the things that Tibbs and his staff saved Julius Randle, that Tibbs that he wants to play for that holds his guys accountable when Julius is bought in and the players are bought in one through 15 they're playing hard for Tibbs and and it's reflective of their record and Tibbs no doubt deserves coach of the year recognition for just doing a lot with the little I mean this was David Fisdale's team by and large and from where they've come from defensively now the offense is on an uptick and they're just playing hard they're playing smart on a, on a nightly basis it's incredible CP of the franchise with us here. He is the founder of Knicks Fan TV, YouTube's number one channel for the New York Knicks. Now, as far as you know, their matchup here, CP, with the Hawks, the Knicks, of course, went 3-0 against Atlanta in the regular yeah. season. Julius Randle basically averaged like 40 points a game against them in the three times you know, the Knicks saw the Hawks. How do you think the Knicks match up with Atlanta? And also, just how significant is it the Knicks are the four seed and they will have home court in the playoffs? Home court is everything, and that's why, you know, I, I got to take a step back because last night, yesterday's matinee game against the Celtics was a nail-biter, Jake. We went up against the Celtics G League or Z League team, if you will, and they took us to the wire. I mean, they went on a 19-3 run in the fourth quarter. Knicks had a 17-point lead in the fourth quarter. Celtics come roaring back between, behind Tremont Waters and, and the gang, and we almost lost the game. So... And, 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 you know, with home court on the line there. So it was very important for us to do so because I think this series with the Hawks could go six, seven games. And so that last home game could be pivotal. You're going up, up, up against the Hawks team that is playing very well under Nick McMillan going 26 and 11 since McMillan took over for Lord Pierce in March. Um, they have Trey Young, who you have to contend with. Pella, who you have to contend with on the glass and, and uh, as a defensive presence. Uh, no doubt Julius had his way with the Hawks and they swept the Hawks in the season series. So it's going to be interesting to see how McMillan schemes for him because you know they have to draw more double teams. Knicks are going to see more zone and consequently the Knicks shooters are going to have to step up in a big way and that's RJ Barrett, that's Reggie Bullock, that's Derrick Rose. I, I hope they start Derrick Rose at the So interesting matchup indeed. And that is certainly a, a, a conversation that Nick fans love to have, right? Every Nick fan wants yeah. to see yeah. Derrick Rose in the starting lineup and less, of course, of uh, Alfred Payton. Why do you think, though, at this point, CP, Thibodeau has not done that? Because the numbers bear it out. Rose, a far superior yeah. player than what we've seen from Alfred Payton. Yeah, you know, Jake, it's, it's hard to put a finger on it. I don't know if it's been load management, if they've been trying to get Rose 
point where, you know, he can close the games but not have to put so much wear and tear on him. I really don't know why Derrick Rose has not started. You know, maybe Tibbs is not want to upset the chemistry of the starting lineup, but it's time because Alfred Payton has gotten to the point where he has regressed not only offensively but also defensively, and he's giving you zero. I think when you see Alec Burks coming in as the emergency point, that gives us enough where you can start Derrick Rose, you put in Burks off the bench as, as your backup point guard. And I think in this series against a Hawks team that has a lot of per, uh, perimeter threats, Frank Nielakina is going to have to play a big role, especially on the defensive end. When you're talking about guys like Trey Young, you have Lou Williams coming off the bench. You have Kevin Herter, uh, uh, Cam Reddish, you know, uh, Brandon Goodwin. You have those guys that you have to contend with. So I think Frank's presence is going to be pivotal in this series. Peyton is going to have to take a step back on the bench. It, it's time to go Rose as a starter. CP, the franchise with us. You can find him on Twitter at KnicksFanTV. <sighs> How loud will MSG sound when the Knicks take the court for game one? It's already been loud with 2,000, Jake. Now you get 30% capacity. It's going to be electric. It's going to be absolutely electric. You know, we, we went out on the street and captured some fan cams uh, during the last three home games, and the fans are excited. They're juiced. It, it's it's going to be electric, man, because like I said, no one thought we would be here, and it's nothing like playoff basketball in New York City. No doubt about it. And, you know, as far as some of the other matchups to look at, CP, I mean, how significant do you think it is that this coaching staff, of course, led by Tom Thibodeau, now has over a week to prepare for the Atlanta Hawks? At least Randall said in previous interviews, there's no one who's more prepared for Tibbs. And this is what I love because Tibbs is ready for it. He's a seasoned veteran. He's been through the dance before. Derrick Rose and Todd Gibson has been there before with him. That's very important that we have guys that have been battle tested and ready for this moment because, you know, Julius Randall, RJ Barrett, this is new territory for them. And they're going to be relied on to play pivotal roles here so to have Tibbs here and that coaching staff well having this team well prepared having Derrick Rose and Tobbs Gibson already uh, being there I think it, it really helps this team focus and lock in mentally and be ready prepare a good game plan and be ready to go for next week CP as far as the rest of the Eastern Conference give me your thoughts yeah, yeah. On, uh, mm -hmm. on on some of the matchups here and obviously how significant in your mind is it that Philly locks up the one seed and now we're on a collision course for potentially seeing Milwaukee and the Nets play in the second round. Yeah, that's big for Philly. You know, definitely big for Philly to avoid that because now if you're looking at the Nets and Milwaukee, they're going to have to go through each other before they, they get to a Philly in a potential conference finals matchup. So that certainly should be interesting. I see a lot of interesting matchups in the first round, Jake. First and foremost, I put uh, these two series in my revenge bracket, and that is the Clippers and the Mavericks. You know, the Mavericks having lost to the Clippers in the bubble. Tensions were flaring a little bit there with Marcus Morris and, and uh, Luka Doncic. So we'll see if Luka can, can get revenge. A healthy KP will certainly help there. And then you have the Bucks and the Heat. You know, the Bucks did the Knicks a favor on, on Friday night by beating the Heat and allowing the, the Knicks to jump over the Heat and get into that four seed potential. Uh, but the Bucks got destroyed by the Heat in the bubble, 4-1 to one in that series where, you know, Jimmy Butler, Bam, and those guys just, just absolutely took the freak and the Bucks to school. So the Bucks will have some revenge on their mind. How will they uh, execute against, uh, you know, a savvy, savvy Heat defense? You got to give credit to Eric Spolscher. The way he, you know, masterminds those those defensive schemes to really fluster uh, and frustrate the the freak. It's going to be a very interesting series. So that's my revenge bracket. I think Portland and Denver is going to be a very entertaining series as well. And you know, with Westbrook pacing the Wizards and and really having them on the rise, could Westbrook take them out of the playing game and ultimately meet the Nets? That would be interesting. You know, uh, uh, a Nets-Wizards potential matchup in the first round would be very interesting. So uh, those are the matchups that I'm most looking forward to. And then you also have the Lakers and the, the Warriors in the play-in game. You know, the Lakers slipping into the play-in. You have a Warriors team that's playing hot. I'm sure the NBA loves that, seeing LeBron and Steph Curry going at it to uh, to get into the playoffs. No doubt about it. I mean, you couldn't have uh, you know picked a better play-in matchup than getting LeBron and Steph in that play. And yeah. my question to you, CP, is that, you know, it, let, let, let's figure LeBron and AD are healthy and they play well, you know, against the Warriors. LeBron is a seventh seed against these two seeded Suns. I mean, the Lakers yeah. have to be considered the favorites, right? I mean, it just comes down to LeBron's health at this point. 
as, as long, long as they're healthy, I'm not going to count out LeBron James. I'm not going to count out the champs. They have two superstars on that team. They play championship caliber defense when you factor in Caruso. Uh, we'll see what happens with Schroeder. How does he rebound coming off of COVID and have to pick up his conditioning? But I think as long as your top two dogs are healthy, that being LeBron James and Anthony Davis, I'm going to take them over the Suns. Now, yesterday against the Pelicans, things got a little bit shaky because uh, Anthony Davis would, would walk out of there hobbled and LeBron James would walk out of there hobbled. So uh, you just don't know the health of LeBron James's ankle. And with Anthony Davis, you know, he's built to be, you know, very susceptible to those lower leg, lower extremity injuries. So you hope those guys can make it through healthy. And if they do, I got to factor them in over the Suns in the first round. CP, the franchise with us here. Finally, CP, back to the Knicks. As far as regular yeah. seasons that you've seen this team have over the last, you know, 30 something yeah. years, you've been a fan of the team. Where does this one rank in your mind? How rewarding, how satisfying has it been to see the Knicks go out there and have a 22 win total projection and end up as the fourth seed in the conference? It's probably number one, honestly, because if you go back, this is the first time they made it in eight years. The Knicks tape team in 2012-13, led by Carmelo, did win 54 games, and they were electric. They were outstanding, but the way they put that roster together, you figure that they would have some success. I mean, they brought in a savvy Jason Kidd. You had Steve Novak shooting threes off the bench. They, they had some guys, J.R. Smith having a six-man of the year uh, type of year, and, and so they had some talent there, but with this Nick team, as I said, this was mostly David Fisdale's team. They won 21 games last year. Julius Randle shot 29% from three. RJ Barrett was inefficient from three. They were a terrible team, Jake. I had them winning 26 games. Vegas had them winning 22 games. So to see them accomplish this 41 wins in a 72-game season, winning 13 of their last 16 and making the fourth seed in the playoffs. This is right up there, the best Knicks season in the last 20 years, no question. No doubt, and it should be a lot of fun over the coming weeks. Playoff basketball back at Madison Square Garden, and the Knicks fans are going to be going crazy. CP, appreciate your time, man. Love all the content that you and your team produce at Knicks Fan TV on YouTube. And uh, we'll be we'll be checking in with you for as long as this Knicks playoff run continues here. Looking forward to it. Happy to be on, Jake. Anytime you need me, just give me a call. Thanks again.